nice flat layers, crazy dome. Not cool. He said, question for Ross, do you know of an explanation for seismic waves on an FE and the behavior of PS and surface waves on seismographs? And essentially what he's asking is we can do seismic imaging on the interior of the earth and we can watch different seismic waves kind of bounce around off the crust and it's a pretty good indicator the earth is spherical. Yes, that's awesome. Because it doesn't make sense if it's flat that we get the readings we do, like as geologists. And so he wants to know what's the flat Earth explanation for that. Why? Okay, does well, I'm, I'm certainly no expert in such matters, you know, like I'm not a Right, right, right. Expert. No, no, no. Let, let, let me go. And, and I can't be a complete expert in just about everything to do with geophysics of the Earth and whatnot, but I can probably give you a reasonable logical deduction. I am so glad. Flat Earth Aussie here gave that introduction before he went into his answer. I don't know everything. Here's my off the cuff response. If you say that, if you preface with, hey, I don't know, but I'm willing to have the conversation, that means to me that you're at least open to the response and rebuttal. You don't get that a lot. A lot of the Flat Earth community seems to be. Um, masters of all trades and has every single question 100% answered, no problem, you're an ass if you disagree with him. So, kudos to Flat Earth Aussie for at least acknowledging that this stuff is out of his wheelhouse. And to, to my point of view is, well, if everything is sort of floating above sea level, like we have, we have an iceberg, most of it is below the water level, but you've got the tiny little bit above it. Well, what about land birds? Maybe that's what continents are. Maybe they're fixed on pillars, as some people suggest. Or maybe there's big floating um, land birds that sometimes bump and grind into one another. I want to hate the land birds argument here, but I kind of can't, right? I mean, no, it's not floating on liquid, like icebergs float on water, but tectonic plates do kind of float and jostle about so he's like he's not right but he's not stupidly wrong either and because the whole uh, substance of what they're sitting in is still fluid then maybe you're just measuring those fluid waves and these seismic detectors which are very sensitive sort of things that's what they're detecting and it's just a matter of interpreting it the right way like if you assume it's a ball in the first place then you're going to find a way to make it match your expectations but if you think of it differently and then you try and interpret it in another way then maybe it will match that so what flat earth aussie gave is essentially a non-answer well maybe if someone did find a different solution then we'd have a different solution let me explain exactly what i'm talking about here so you can understand the problem with your response that's not how any of this works. To start, basic physics. Energy will travel through a medium as either a P wave or an S wave. P waves are compressional and go with the direction of the energy. S waves shear and go perpendicular to the direction of the energy as shown by this slinky example. So, if you have a disruption on the Earth, such as, for example, an earthquake, the energy from that earthquake will travel through the Earth in both P-wave and S-wave format. The fun part, though, is S-waves don't travel through liquids. I linked a video down below. It does a fantastic job explaining this. I don't want to spend the nine minutes to do that when this video is over. Check the description for the links. Watch that one if you want to understand as to why S-waves don't travel through liquids. So since P waves and S waves have this cool interaction with liquids, i.e. S waves don't interact with liquids, we have this phenomenon called a S wave shadow zone. That is, in short, if you have an earthquake on one side of the planet, the other side of the planet does not receive direct S waves because those S waves would have to travel through the liquid outer core of the Earth and they cannot. And since seismograms are recording throughout the world all the time continuously, whenever we have these disturbances, we notice this S-wave shadow on the other side of the world. 
you can go online you can watch live seismograms right now i'll provide a link down below if you want so hopefully you understand the argument i'm making and the science behind it these things are recorded basically continuously all the time they're real you want to say well we use the round earth as the argument here because that's the, what we want to see. If you looked at it from a flat earth perspective, you could have it. I'd like to see that flat earth perspective. Please, show me how a shadow zone, for example, I can give you other things, but let's just talk S-wave shadow zone. Show me how those exist on a flat earth map. Because if you want to throw out the foundational core belief of most all modern science that the world is round, you're gonna need to throw out every argument for that round earth. Flat earth conversations nowadays on YouTube always revolve on the same five or six goddamn arguments. Look at that boat over the shore there. Look, the sun is round. All this stupid crap. I hope this video kind of pushes that argument in a new direction. I'd like to see flat earthers try to tackle the broad scope of science that's out there. That's my answer. Okay, and I, I do want to say, Ross, on my PG-13 streams, you can't say bump and grind too much, man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs>